Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Start another week here. We're going to do a little bit different this week. We're going to talk about spiritual conflict. And I, we'll be looking at it for the next four days. I'm going to be talking about uh, the inward battle, uh, the spiritual weapons, the invisible foes, the fight of faith, and then the entire consecration. In other words, completely devoted, completely consecrated or set aside for the work of the Lord. So we're going to start off today with the inward battle. And uh, if you're familiar with uh, the book of Romans, in chapter 7, Paul has a uh, really a little picture of, of who he is, what's going on inside him. You know, uh, normally we think about Paul as, you know, he's uh, completely dedicated. He's one of those guys that you would think that uh, he probably never had an evil thought or, uh, you know, just nothing come into his life because he was completely uh, committed to uh, reaching the Gentiles and uh, spreading the gospel. And, uh, we see here, we get to uh, chapter 7, and we see that uh, Paul has a, a little conflict between the law and the flesh and uh, so forth. And that's what we're going to look at a little bit. He says, uh, that, how can I resolve the struggle within myself? If you have a study Bible, that's what mine has kind of a title for this. So we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 7, and we'll be starting off and looking about verses 15 uh, to 25, I guess. And we'll key at the last part of it. So if you got your Bible, looking at Romans chapter 7 and verse number 15. It says, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that's what I do. So you see this, this conflict, uh, it goes on. And maybe you experience that sometimes yourself where we have the, uh, the law, or we have the Bible, the law of God, and we have our flesh, the world of flesh and the devil, and sometimes they, they clash. Uh, this temptation, these things going on, and we know that we shouldn't do it, but we do it. And, no saying we know if I should do that, but I don't do it. And Paul's, that's what he's talking about. He said, if, if then in verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law, that is good, or I, I go, with, go along with the law. Now then, there's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And he's talking about that inherent sin nature that we have. That, you know, um, we, got, we come to know Christ as a Savior. We're born again. We're into the family of God. We're, we're uh, set aside for His use. And... Uh, that old flesh, the flesh didn't get saved. The flesh is still there. That world of flesh and the devil still draws at us. And, and verse 18, he says this, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And in the flesh we know that's true. They said, for, for the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And I've been able to do that which is good. He, he talks about the flesh and he talks about different ways, but I think in this case here he's talking about this, that inherent flesh, that uh, uh, the uh, not the, that you kind of you grab hold of, but it's just the, the flesh, the way of the world, the, the way of the flesh. And he says, uh, but uh, it no, there's no good thing for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good, now here we go in verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Uh, you, when we read this, we notice that uh, this isn't something that he's just talking about a third person. He's not talking about somebody else. Uh, look at all the personal pronouns. He says, I, 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 me. So we see that this is all about Paul. And it's the struggles that he went through in life. So, you know, uh, I consider Paul the greatest apostle that ever lived, the greatest soul winner that ever lived. And uh, to know that he struggles too sometimes, it... Uh, when we struggle, and when I struggle, I realize, you know what, uh, Paul has sold out as he was for the Lord, is really committed to, to living the kind of life that would bless God and win souls for Christ. He struggled with, with the inside uh, things that uh, he fought with, and he says, uh, when he struggled with it, you know that, you know what, I'm farther down on the chain than he is as far as spirituality, and so I can understand that, that uh, I'm going to struggle too. And you're going to struggle too. We're going to go through struggles. That's just the normal way it is. In fact, it's, it's, it's an evidence of salvation. When you, when you recognize that you're not doing right, you want to do right, but you're struggling with being able to do right because of the, the battle that's going on within you, uh, that's a sign that, 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 you're, that you really are saved, that God is really working with you. Through the Word and the Holy Spirit, He's working with you, trying to get you to do right, so we have that struggle. And verse 20 says, Now if I do that, I would not. There's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. See, the, the law, what the law did, the law couldn't save, but the law uh, pointed out sin. It says earlier in this chapter, without the law, I wouldn't know what sin was. And thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, until you see that, you don't recognize what the law is. You don't recognize what sin is. 
So the law is good, but the law is condemning. The law just shows you that you can't live up to it, that you can't obey the law. That when uh, God gave the law to Moses, there was 613 uh, precepts and commandments and all kinds of things. He gave 613 that you would have to obey all of those to be perfect. Well, there's no way that you can even control your mind that much. You might, a man might be able to control his body and the actions that he does, but the mind is, you know, you can just look. Jesus said, if you even look at a woman, if you have hate in your heart, all of these things are just, and that's in the mind. So the idea is that I, if I find the law then that I would do evil is present with me. And verse, excuse me, 22 says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So we see that the evidence of his salvation, the, the lost person would not delight in the law of God. In fact, the lost person, a lot of the things that Paul was probably struggling with, and we really don't have a list of them right here, but the idea is the things that he was struggling with, the unsaved person probably wouldn't even struggle with. That would just be part of their nature, and they would just be feeding the flesh and, and fulfilling those desires. So he wouldn't be caught trying to do one thing or another. He says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So he's recognized <coughs> excuse me, that who he is and what he is. And then we go to verse 23, and this is kind of where we want to get here. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law in my mind. So my body and the, my mind, there's this battle going on and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So he's talking about that this body is doing what he shouldn't do. This body is not living like it should live. And then it gets to verse 24, it says this, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am. See, this has uh, got an exclamation point there. The idea is that he's, he's really struggling. He is really trying to do right. You know, he tells us over in um, Hebrews chapter 12. He said, let us lay aside the sin that so easily besets us and run with race, run the race that's set before us. And using Christ as, a, as our example. But, uh, and the idea here, Paul saying, you know what, I, I'm struggling here. I'm, I'm wretched. This is terrible if I could just... Listen, if I could just lay aside the sin that so easily besets me. Did you ever notice that? Yeah, do you have anything in your life, just looking at your life in general, do you have any uh, sin that so easily besets you? Maybe it's, it's maybe it's gossip, or maybe it's unforgiveness, maybe it's something else, but there's something that just pops up. You just all of a sudden it's there. And uh, that's the, the kind of sin that so easily besets And what it does, it weighs us down in our walk as we live out this life and with the testimony for the Lord as we try to live it out, those sins that so easily beset us. In other words, they just, they just jump on us, they fall on us, and, and uh, we just have to struggle with it. And he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? How, how am I going to escape it? So Paul's talking about this, we're talking about this inward battle. It's not out there on the outside. It's not those things out there. It's right here. And see, those are the battles that people can't see. People, that's why you say you don't know a person's heart. You don't know why they did what they did or what they're struggling with. So that's why we need to be maybe a little bit more considerate of one, of, of one another, not to throw somebody under the bus because they do something that we don't agree with or they fall into sin. We don't know what they're struggling with, why they're doing that. But I like that last verse, and he says here, he says, Verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he goes to verse 25, the last verse in that chapter. I thank God to Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he, he's got it up here, and he struggles with it down here, getting his body to do what he should do. But uh, as, as Paul struggled, and we don't read much about his struggles, we know he had to struggle with the thorn in the flesh. But when we see what Paul went through, those inward struggles, and so you and I, you and I can recognize that we're going to have those struggles too. But the key is that we struggle with it. We don't succumb to it. We don't just say, oh, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. No, we struggle with it. We fight against it, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You know, flee useful temptations, uh, Paul writes to Timothy. So we want to get away from those things. So we don't want to get, get ourselves in a position where those kind of things can get into our life and tempt us. And we have that struggle. I want to do it, but I don't want to do it. We're well, going back and forth. First of all, you need to know Christ as your Savior. Once you're born into the family of God, then you'll have those struggles. As a, as a uh, unsaved person, you don't have the struggles like you do as a Christian. Because an unsaved person, the devil ain't bothering you so much. But for the Christian, he's out to get you. The world, the flesh, and the devil come after us. All right. So first of all, you need to repent. 
what you do is you, you're in the world, your heart's in the world, you're in the flesh. And so what we do is with our heart we repent, we turn to God and put our faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that payment for our sins. We become a new creature, we walk a new path of life, and we have a new joy, a new little bounce in our step, if you would. But to do that, you got to repent, turn, put your faith in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray to be with each one of us, Lord, as we walk this pathway of life. And, and you know that how we're put together, you know how we're made, you know our heart. And we pray, Father, you'd be with each one of us that we might have a heart for you. And as we struggle with those inner conflicts, Lord, that we would be victorious over the temptation and trials and be honoring you. We thank you for loving us and thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.